All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. So good day, everyone, and welcome back to our Zoe quarterly update webinar series. Last quarter, we featured Zoe chat, and this quarter, our focus topic is going to be Zoe Explorer for IntelliJ. So um, we'll start with that, our focus topic. And then as promised last quarter, when we introduced the Zoe roadmap, we'll give you an update on that initiative. And then we'll conclude with some newsworthy items, recent and upcoming events. That's how we uh, close out typically um, every one of our uh, quarterly update webinars. Um, but before we dive into our focus topic, just a few housekeeping items. Um, the attendee microphones are muted. Um, those of us who are presenting are, are not muted. Uh, so if you're not speaking, please go on mute. Uh, the webinar, as always, will be recorded for replay and will be available at the OMP YouTube channel. Look for the Zoe quarterly update playlist and we'll have all of our webinars recorded here. We've been doing this for about uh, two years now, so there's quite a few there. Uh, you, you're gonna wanna jump to the bottom of that list to find the most recent uh, recordings. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions at all along the way, please type them in as we go. We typically do not have time to take questions at the end, and what we try to do is we try to address them as we're running through the presentation in real time. And if by chance we don't get to all of the questions, we will follow up with responses as soon as we're able to do that. Uh, then finally, just a, an introduction. I'm Rose Sakach. I'm the Zoe Onboarding Squad Lead, uh, current Zoe Advisory Council Chair, and a member of the Zoe Technical Steering Committee. Um, I will be um, hosting this, as you know, and, and I'll be wrapping it up with, with some information after our um, main topics for today. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and, and move on to our focus topic and our focus squad. Vladislav, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Rose. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Vladislav. I am the IntelJ squad team uh, lead. Um, uh, we've been presenting with Valentin. Uh, it's my colleague, also from the hello. Squad. Yeah, hello, Valentin. Um, and today we are going to present Zoe Explorer for IntelliJ. Uh, what is it essentially? Uh, it's a plugin for IntelliJ platform. By that I mean that it is compatible for uh, almost every IDE of the IntelliJ. Um, so uh, what is the Zoe Explorer itself? Uh, it, we inspired uh, by the Zoe Explorer Visual Studio Code uh, extension. Uh, it, it's almost uh, the thing that uh, shows all, all the information about data sets, about the USS files you have on the mainframe, about some other systems like uh, JAS uh, and so on. So uh, without any interruption, let's start. Uh, first, what we want to describe is the basics uh, of working with the Zoe Explorer for IntelliJ. Um, uh, how, how you can acquire, first of all, the Zoe Explorer for IntelliJ? It's a plugin that could be acquired through the built in function of the IntelliJ IDE uh, called JetBrains Marketplace. Uh, just in the settings of the IDE, you should uh, find the uh, option to install the plugins, and uh, in that uh, in that view, you should uh, be able to find the Zoe Explorer by typing in the name of the plugin. And uh, as soon as you install the plugin and all the installation process steps are completed, you are ready to work with that. First, what you uh, will get is the tab on the right or the left uh, of your IDE, and uh, it will say that it is a Zoe Explorer uh, with the Zoe icon on that, and clicking on the uh, tab, it will it will show the um, the other view uh, in which you will be able to control all the um, data sets or uses files or centuries uh, and um, 
to start working with your mainframe, uh, of course, it is needed uh, firstly to create a connection to the mainframe. And let's start with that. And uh, how to create a connection is quite uh, easy. Uh, first, what you need uh, is to click on plus button on top of that. And um, the, the other option is to do it through the settings, uh, clicking by the range uh, button. And in there, some manipulations, and you are ready to go. And in here, you type in the connection name. Uh, of course, it will be a unique connection name. Uh, like uh, in here, we are typing some, something like ZOS. Uh, it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't include some other options. Just uh, it will be easier for you to specify with which uh, connection you want to work. Uh, through the uh, through the interaction uh, with the uh, plugin. Uh, so after you type in the connection name, uh, it is needed to specify the URL to the ZSMF um, with the port, uh, of course. Uh, and after you are ready with that, uh, you just type in the username and password uh, of the user that will be able to control uh, the plugin. Uh, with uh, working with the ZSMF API with the appropriate permissions. Uh, also, there is a uh, an option to uh, accept self signs as the cell certificates if you don't have properly one sign. And uh, the last one you can ignore. We just eliminated it in the uh, newest version of our plugin. Okay, and after the test is completed, uh, after the test of the connection uh, is successful, you are ready to go. Uh, if there is some uh, errors through the testing of the connection, it will say what's wrong and uh, just retype some information, and that's it. Yeah, and uh, the other option to create a connection to the mainframe is through the Zoe Config version 2. Uh, essentially, it's a uh, it's a different thing as uh, for the uh, for the plugin itself. We store the credentials uh, and uh, all the information about the connection uh, in the um, internal JetBrains uh, storage, uh, IntelliJ storage. Uh, it uh, it stores uh, credentials and uh, all the information about the connections uh, in a secure way. Um, also, we can say uh, this about the Zoe config as we store some of the information about the connection, uh, such as IP, um, IP port, uh, rejection authorized, and so on. Uh, and you can see it uh, through the JSON uh, as you create it uh, through the console if you have Zoe CLI. Or if you just edit it, if you have it already, uh, but uh, the credentials uh, for the connection is also stored in the secure uh, credentials uh, store of the IntelliJ. So, and here we are trying to create a new Zoe config through the Zoe config init CLI command. Uh, it just uh, uh, asks us uh, to specify some uh, something about the connection. Uh, of course. Uh, yeah, and after after the config is created, uh, we can add uh, the connection to the plugin uh, configuration, and uh, it, it can pass the JSON of the Zoe config v2 and uh, create a connection inside the plugin. Uh, of course, there are some things that should be manually set up before you can work with the uh, main. You, you, before we can work with that uh, connection. Uh, but uh, first, what you need is to add that connection anyway. And then here you will be able to see after you click on that anyway. Yeah, in settings, you will be, uh, you will be able to see the new connection. Uh, the unique name is Zoe, Zoe Explorer with some uh, secure to ZSMF URL and username. Uh, not publicly, not publicly available uh, for the purpose of the demo, of course. Uh, in here, we just uh, select uh, reject an unauthorized uh, 
false as the, we don't have proper signed certificate for our local machine. Uh, that's okay, I guess. And uh, yeah, specify the port. Then we, we've tried to connect to the connection that we've created previously. And also, uh, as you can see in here, it's possible to uh, to change uh, the options uh, either through the Zoe config JSON or, or through the plugin, and uh, it depends on what you want to do. Yeah, it's possible both ways. Okay, in here, okay. Connection is tested and it uh, works fine and uh, we are ready to go. Yeah, after you change some options, it will also uh, ask you if you want to change the Zoe config JSON. And uh, let's continue. After you created the connection, uh, you're ready to work with your data sets and your SS files. Um, after the creation, uh, after the connection is uh, in your configuration, um, if in the plugin configuration, um, you can create a open set inside of which you will be able to add some filters and uh, uses mask, uh, uses filters and uh, data set masks to see uh, all the data sets or files under that uh, filter or mask. Uh, it's also possible to create uh, the working set uh, both uh, through the plus button or through the settings. And if you have a connection, just click on plus button and uh, first what you guys to ask you is to specify the working set name. Uh, also, you can specify a connection as I mentioned previously with the unique name you have. Again, here, for example, it's, it will be a working set. Uh, it, is, it doesn't matter what the name of that working set. Uh, all, the matter, uh, all that matters is uh, the uniqueness of the name also. So in here, for example, we want to see all uh, the data sets under the ZSMF dot to asterisk. Uh, and here, after the loading is completed, it will show all the data set that we have on our system. Yeah. Like you see in here. Uh, the plugin can uh, distinguish between the sequential data sets and uh, the libraries, uh, and it will show also the members of them if they are libraries. Um, if we are talking about the JS Explorer, uh, it also works through the working sets, but it's a JS working sets. In here, you will also have a unique name for your working set uh, when you add it. Um, after you specify it, you can specify also a connection and uh, that you just click plus button uh, to create a job filter. Like, uh, for example, in here, um, you will specify uh, either prefix and owner or the job ID uh, if you want the direct job ID. Um, and if we specify it like that, uh, then we just say that we want to see all the jobs under the prefix asterisk uh, with uh, only ZSMF AD. It means all the jobs under the only ZSMF AD. Yeah. And after the jobs are loaded, uh, you can also, oh, sorry. After the jobs are loaded, you will be all also able to see what's going on uh, with that job, what the uh, output status, what is the status of the job, and so on. <coughs> what is the JCL with which the job uh, was running? Um, the next cool feature is how to work with data set and uses uh, files. Uh, it is about uh, how to manipulate them. Um, for example, here you can create new data set, new member if it is a library, new mask under the working set, the new working set if you want. Um, and then here, yeah, we are trying to create a new data set. It asks you all for all of the parameters needed to create the new data set, of course, and uh, with the advanced parameters. 
for now we will, we will just skip that and uh, also we can uh, create a new that set uh, like the one we have already in our system just click and allocate like it duplicates all the information about that date set instead uh, other than the date set name name uh, and uh, after you specify the date set name you want, uh, it will create the new one. For example, in here we are duplicating the uh, library. Of course, it will allocate like, but not duplicate all the information and contents inside of that data set, uh, just the parameters and the members won't go in that data set. But uh, no worries, uh, we also have a copy paste cut uh, functionality. And if you want to transfer some data from one data set to another, uh, or from data set to USS file, or vice versa, it, uh, on your own, uh, you, you, it, it's possible to do it uh, through the plugin. Just clicking copy or control C and uh, pasting through the paste or control V. Okay. Uh, there is also other options like rename, migrate, as you could see, delete, and so on. Uh, of course, when you are renaming the data set, there will be also a unique name of the data set, and uh, in other ways, it won't be possible as it will give you an error as the data set name will be unique. Okay. And uh, also, it's possible to see the properties of the data set or USS file that you have or even the member. And also, you can delete uh, anything you want from the system. Yeah, like in here, we are deleting the member of the data set. And now, moving on to the uh, Jazz Explorer and the functionality of the jobs and working with the jobs through, through the plugin. Like, for example, if you have a GCL on your system, if you want to run it uh, through the plugin, it's possible just click the right, uh, right mouse button and push submit job, and it will start uh, the new job. Uh, immediately will appear the console window that will uh, show all the information about the job running. With the steps, of course, and uh, this is quite a simple job. It says almost nothing, just a hello world. Oh, yeah. And uh, that were the basics. And now we are moving to the new features. Okay. Yeah, let me intercept your screen. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, bring it back and bring it to you. Mm -hmm. um, so, Vladislav just told you about the basic functionality of our plugin, but it, of course, is uh, not all the functionality, and uh, there are some new features and some features in development that we uh, want to show you. How does it work? The first one uh, is completely revoked uh, just Explorer. Uh, so how does it uh, look like now? Uh, now if you if you will create the GS working set, uh, let us create just simple uh, JS working set with a prefix and a owner. Uh, if you can see, uh, the status of the jobs uh, improved a bit. Uh, so after the job name and job ID, uh, we have a specific status. Uh, this status is highlighted by different colors. Uh, there are three possible uh, colors, uh, red, blue, and green. Uh, so the red means that job finished with zero, like this. Uh, the blue means that uh, a job is started, but not finished yet. Uh, yet. Uh, the green one means that uh, job uh, is completed successfully. 
uh, what information uh, could we extract from this status? Uh, the first uh, is the date and time. If the job is uh, finished, uh, it will display the finish time. Uh, you can see that uh, the status says that uh, the job ended at 18 October 2022. Uh, also, it displays the time. Yeah, uh, if the job is if if the job is running, it will uh, display uh, the start date, and also uh, the second thing that is uh, displayed on the job status is uh, uh, the return code of the job. Uh, so I think now this explorer looks like more informative and uh, more convenient and useful. Let's move on. Uh, what about uh, editing, running, and producing the job? Uh, so, as Lad said before, uh, after the uh, submitting the submission of the job, the job console view uh, appears on the bottom of the plugin of the IDE, uh, which will display uh, the cons uh, the log of the job with the additional post fix uh, the end of the job with uh, its uh, return code owner uh, and uh, some small uh, phrase that the job is executed um, we can also edit the uh, gcl for this job uh, so as you can see we just uh, choose this item from the JS Explorer. We don't need to uh, find uh, the actual member from which uh, the job was started. So it's quite easy. Uh, we can just uh, push this item and uh, the original GCL of the job will appear in the editor and we can uh, change it like we want. Uh, and after some changes performed, we can just push this uh, uh, green triangle on the right top side of the editor and uh, a job will be submitted again. Yeah, as you can see, the same result. Um, yeah, we can refresh to just get... Uh, the new changes of the JS Explorer. Yeah, there wasn't uh, the green status on, on the previous slide, so uh, now you can see uh, what uh, how does the job uh, that finish successfully looks like. Uh, and uh, maybe also a few words about the uh, control pane uh for the job console view uh here we have three buttons uh first uh first one uh will resume the job if it's holded uh, the second one will hold the job if it is running uh third one will uh purge the job and another option to purge the job is just to use uh, a right button on the uh oh no sorry uh third button will uh cancel the job and fourth button uh with the stretch will uh, push the job and uh, clean its uh, output so as you can see now uh there are only one job left after we push it uh, and as one uh, let's move on. Uh, what about copying the files? Uh, so it's not a completely new feature, but uh, it was uh, completely uh, finished just recently. What do I mean? Uh, previously, we can just uh, copy the files uh, only inside one system uh, only. 
between uh, the simple uh, data sets, the simple uh, folders, and etc. and etc. Now uh, we can uh, copy from anywhere we want and to uh, anywhere we want. We can just uh, uh, drag and drop, for example, file to the local machine. If you want, we can uh, drag and drop from the local machine to remote. Uh, we can copy even between two remote machines. Just uh, let's see how does it work. Just drag and drop or control C plus plus control V will give us a necessary result about copying. Let's move on. Uh, one more cool feature that uh, also was added recently is budget load. Uh, what about uh, budget load? Uh, so previously, uh, if we want to uh, extract the data sets regarding to uh, some mask or the members for the simple data set, uh, there can be some cases when uh, the amount uh, of uh, this data set under the mask or member under members under the data set uh, is so large then uh, that uh, sometimes uh, request even can timed out. Uh, so you will get uh, the error in the plugin. Uh, uh, that uh, data sets are uh, fetching too long and uh, we cannot process such case. But now uh, we implemented features that will uh, give you possibility to load all the file files in your, if you want. Uh, the idea of, the of this feature is to divide uh, the desired uh, mask on the parts uh, we want uh like this and to move uh each part one by one uh so when the user requests first time uh the first batch it will uh extract the first batch for example first 10 files uh after that we, uh, the user will request another batch and another batch will also uh be fetched to the uh, plugin and will be displayed in the explorer. So let us see how does it work uh, on the practice. So now uh, we have set uh, the batch amount uh, correctly. So we get the timeout exception, uh, timeout error. And we go to the settings and change the batch amount, for example, to five files. And let us refresh, just refresh the uh, mask and see uh, what will happen. Yeah, uh, you can see that first five files was fetched from the mask. And we can see that uh, uh, also 479 items left. Uh, and we can uh, load uh, the next batch of the files. Let us just for the practice uh, purpose change uh, amount of batch to 10 and load the next batch just for demonstrational purpose. Yeah, this looked like this. Let's move on. In development, uh, I yeah. think what I need to give mm -hmm. control. Okay, sure. And uh, right now I'm going to share some things uh, that are in development state uh, in our plugin. Uh, on the next release, we are planning to introduce such a thing as encoding changing. As for now, it's not possible to fetch the file uh, in the correct one. Uh, so in here, as we can see, it's just the content uh, inside of the file that is uh, displayed through properly, but uh, sometimes uh, it's possible that the uh, user have uh, some file that the uh, encoding uh, 
custom encoding a different code the default one that we use. Uh, and uh, in the properties tab, uh, it is possible in properties dialog window. Uh, it is possible to select the file encoding that you want to uh, show the content. Yeah. Uh, for example, here file encoding uh, is set to IBM uh, 1025. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, when we try to change it to UTF 8 and click OK, it will uh, show the dialog window that will ask us do we want to reload the file with the UTF 8 or to convert the content to the UTF 8. The difference between these two options is uh, to change the contents or do, to not change the contents. Uh, for example, if you want to show the contents and we consider uh, that the file is in the uh, specified encoding, then we just click reload and uh, the file is reloaded uh, with the intention to display content in the UTF-8. If we want uh, the content to be fully rewritten re re to the uh, encoding we've selected, we just click convert it and it will try to convert the contents. And if it is successful, it will save the uh, encoding of the file with the tag of the file. Uh, like the uh, first what we want to try is to convert the contents and here as you can see the, con the conversion is done successfully uh, but the second option we want to try by reloading the file with the specified encoding and uh, as you can see uh, it will show some unknown symbols before that encoding and uh, let's just try it back, switch it back. And uh, in here, we try to reload it again. And uh, oh, it looks great. It's uh, again the thing that we use. The next tool feature that will be introduced in the next version is TSO CLI. We've introduced uh, this uh, CLI into our plugin. Uh, all what you need is to set up all the information about the TCR console will be appearing uh, in the IDE uh, with the connection that you'll specify. Uh, after that, it will test TCR connection to the host. And uh, if everything okay, it will show the console view in which you are able to type in TSO commands. Uh, like for example, here I'm trying to type in time. Yeah, there it is. Also, it is it is possible to run Rex scripts if you want. Uh, for example, here I have some example. We'll just pull the answer and say hello and who you are. And here, yeah, let's try to run that script. Okay, it says. That this is a sample Rex program, and so your name, what you just type in the name. Yeah, and it says hello, Bima, everything goes away. Okay, let me bring it back to you, Valentin. Yeah, let me again to set the screen. So completely new product that we want to uh, to present, uh, to demonstrate is uh, support of GCL uh, language inside the IntelliJ. Uh, so now uh, we are great to, glad to present uh, this feature, not feature, just a separate plugin. Uh, now you, it's possible, it would be possible, it will be released in the, as soon as possible uh, and it is already developed so you can just create a file with extension .gcl and to start to uh, write the code and yeah you can see that all uh, all the stuff is a gcl highlight uh, works uh, work successfully and okay so we can see here some hints uh, some highlights etc but it is the simplest example we can just 
uh, paste some larger job and we can also see that uh, it also highlighted okay uh, also cool uh, feature of this DCL support that it is recognized when the spaces or some symbols uh, exceed the limit of uh, 80 symbols in the file uh, so it will highlight it with the error uh, so yes you you can uh, you can use it you can fill up some parameters remove errors and that's how does gcl highlight uh, looks like an IntelliJ nowadays uh, another one plugin that we will want to release soonly is a Jenkins plugin. Uh, just a few words about it because uh, it's just a separate topic. Uh, it also will use Zoe SDK under the hood and uh, using this plugin, uh, you will be able to uh, communicate with the mainframe. Uh, deploy the code deploy the uh deploy your builds on the mainframe submit gcls uh, uh, maybe download some logs analyze them and etc etc so yeah this plugin i think uh, uh, will will be really useful for the users and uh, uh, will become more convenient way to interact with the, uh, with the mainframe uh, without no agents and uh, uh, no some uh, difficult interact interactions with uh, URL, for example, or uh, configuring uh, the, docking, uh, the Docker images or containers uh, about obviously CLI. Uh, and etc and so on so yeah let's move on uh, so a lot maybe you will return to this topic yeah this one's mine and uh this is how it looks like for our roadmap where right now we have this so exploring with version 0 0.3 and uh, is, uh, contain, uh, there are some features that uh, we've developed uh, such as this just explorer uh, Box and highlights uh, copy remote remote feature introduced finally edit run code job uh, is uh, ready uh, and uh, could be used uh, for the next version uh, we uh, we are mm -hmm. still discussing what is the version but uh, most likely it will be 1.0 we will introduce the encoding feature TSO CLI and uh, maybe uh, introduce the GCI highlight support uh, with the intention to integrate it inside of our plugin somehow. Uh, for the future release, we are planning to work with uh, some data sets, uh, introduce some uh, other languages, uh, highlight and uh, IBM fix support. Also, we are trying to develop some user interface for Jenkins plugin to interact with uh, Jenkins and the plugin uh, from the IntelliJ. Okay, continue. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is how to find us. We have uh, Zoe Explorer and uh, GitHub repo. Uh, it will be inside of the presentation if you want. And uh, the Slack channel is Zoe Explorer and IntelliJ. Uh, feel free to join and uh, leave the feedback if you want. So thanks everyone for listening. Maybe any questions? Questions, anyone? I'm going to take the screen now. Hopefully. Hopefully, without too much interruption. Are you still seeing the presentation, guys? Yes. Okay. Um, great presentation. Thank you for sharing that with all of us. Just a couple of points there. So the Explorer for IntelliJ is GA, but not yet LTS. No, yet. it's uh, still GA. Uh, we, we become GA uh, pretty, right. pretty so sometimes ago. <laughs> you, 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 you. 
several weeks ago, correct. Mm -hmm. and, and the plans for LTS, I believe we're coordinating that with Zoe V3. Uh, let's see, <laughs> I'll say with CS, uh, we have some plans and uh, it, it will be a discussion, I guess. It's, okay. It's Okay, and, and just for clarity's sake, the Explorer 4 um, IntelliJ is not yet included in the support provider conformance program, and we are working on a conformance program for the Zoe Explorer for IntelliJ. Yeah, it's not yet included, but we are in, in actively, uh, we are actively introducing all the things uh, that is needed for the conformance. Perfect. Okay, so if anyone in the audience has any questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat. And um, we will, in the meantime, we'll move on to Mike, who is going to share the latest roadmap update. Yeah, thank you, Rose. Uh, just making sure I've unmuted, right? Yes, uh, that, you are. Okay, cool. That was a great demo. It's great to see um, how far that technology has come along in such a short time. I also have a great idea where we can put some of that roadmap content right in the future. Um, so today, as Rose mentioned earlier, um, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about something that I actually introduced three months ago, and that's the Zoe roadmap. Uh, back, I guess it was September when I first shared the concept and the value and the goals of the roadmap and, and some of the images uh, as well of what the roadmap will look like today. I wanna briefly revisit some of that uh, for those of you who may have missed uh, the last webinar, but then more importantly, I'd like to share some advancements that we've made and talk about next actions related to the roadmap. So just to recap, um, the purpose is to create a single easy place for community members to go to see where Zoe is heading uh, what capabilities are going to be added to uh, to Zoe, and when you might expect to see those capabilities appear. Uh, it's a way of us creating some transparency for the community, but uh, ultimately it's a way for us to solicit feedback and um, you know get your thoughts on what it is that we're planning and where we're going. It's expected that all of the teams are going to continue to provide their updated roadmap content at each PI planning. So it's a three month cadence for refreshing the content and we'll be uh, we'll be sure to make sure that it gets posted shortly after PI planning every quarter. So the first significant improvement from the last quarter, um, and now you can have your own direct access to review the roadmap uh, presentation by yourself. Uh, as of today, it's gone live. It's linked to zoe.org, uh, to the website through the announcements section, right at the top of the landing page. And um, that's at least where it's going to be until we can roll out some of the upcoming improvements to zoe.org. And then you'll see it, uh, you know, featured more permanently as an ongoing entity rather than as a news update. Uh, until then, we'll leave the announcement right where it is, and you can see the roadmap whenever you'd like. Um, the roadmap is broken logically into two sections. There's the timeline overview that you're looking at now, and there's the squad detail. Uh, technically, there's also a header slide that shows when the roadmap was posted, uh, and that's you know going to be followed by this timeline overview, then followed by the detail. Going forward, uh, we're planning to add a few additional sections, and I'll talk about those later when I discuss next actions or you know roadmap for the roadmap and um, what you're looking at here is the first of the two uh, timeline over overview slides uh, this one the first one contains the roadmap content for the client side components that's the cli zoe explorer zoe chat um, and it's exactly the same the two slides are the same they just have different different squads different components on them uh, you, know, you don't have to jump. Well, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Another thing that we've progressed from last quarter uh, is the order of the content of the roadmap. Um, it was a little bit random last quarter when it was first introduced, but today when you look at the roadmap, what you'll see is the content ordered by the target delivery date. So within each of the components or squads, the capabilities that are being delivered this quarter will appear first and the ones that will be delivered in the next quarter will appear after that and etc. cetera. Uh, that seemed the most intuitive way for consumers. And within each block of deliverables, they'll also be sorted by when the work started or will start if it's already something that's in development. So hopefully that helps you to see more easily what squads are currently working on 
uh, and for how long they've been working on them. Um, and each of the boxes on the timeline will also appear in the squad detail section, where you can then get uh, more of an explanation um, for each of the planned capabilities. Um, so the second one that you're looking at now shows the server side content, the API mediation layer, the web UI, also the system squad appears on this slide. Um, and other than that, it's exactly the same as the first of the uh, of the overview slides. So if we move to the next uh, slide, this will be an example of the detail slide. Uh, this one specifically is the detail for the CLI squad. So all of the uh, capabilities that are uh, on the timeline overview for the CLI uh, will be will appear here. And for each one, the detail slide is going to tell you exactly what problem it is that Zoe needs to solve and exactly what's being delivered to solve that problem, uh, when that work is expected to begin, and um, if it's already started, when it's already started. Uh, and then, of course, when the capability is expected to be delivered. And of course, you'll see one of these detail slides for each of the squads that's represented uh, on the overview slides in the roadmap. And Rose, I have just one more slide, which uh, if you can move to, will document um, what we can expect to see next. So first things first, as I mentioned this earlier, uh, we're in the process of revamping the zoe.org site. So once that's done, uh, we'll have a better way to feature the roadmap prominently and more permanently rather than just one of the announcements. But until that, that time, uh, you'll be able to get it from zoe.org right in the announcements section. Uh, next, I mentioned there are a couple of additional sections that are planned. Uh, first is an instruction or a guidance slide. We're going to put that right up front after the header. Uh, it'll be something that'll help consumers to understand what they're about to read, how the work roadmap works, uh, how to consume the content, how to provide feedback uh, you know, on the roadmap or on the content in the roadmap. Um, the, the other section that we'll be adding is the vision for Zoe, uh, something that would come from the ZAC in uh, partnership with the TSC, something that ties all the capabilities that the squads are focused on to a greater purpose and a direction for Zoe. Uh, this would also be revisited regularly and republished using the same cadence every three months, uh, like the rest of the roadmap. So it would stay fresh and current at all times. Uh, and next, we want we want uh, to know exactly what everybody's thinking about the roadmap, and that includes both the format of the roadmap, meaning how consumable is it, how well does it help you uh, to see the big picture, uh, things like that about the format, but then also how do you feel about the content? Where is Zoe going? What features are being planned? Are they giving you uh, what you need as a consumer or as an extender of Zoe? Uh, what about the vision? Is it clear? Does it make sense to you? Uh, so we want to make it Dirt simple to make Rose smile for uh, for everyone to provide uh, feedback on any of the things that uh, that you're looking at right while you're viewing the roadmap. So just it'll be like a click away at all times. We're thinking likely we'll create links that you can click on um, right in the roadmap to open issues up uh, with the appropriate tags already uh, you know, in, in place uh, for the feedback that you're providing. So make sure that your feedback gets to the right people as quickly as possible. So more to come on exactly how we're going to be delivering that. Um, also, we need to create awareness. So one thing that we discussed is you can look, um, expect to see the roadmap being featured in one of the questions of the month um, on zoe.org, possibly even next month. And we uh, may also uh, use that question of the month to solicit some feedback from you about the roadmap as well. And last but not least, uh, this roadmap effort is not uh, trivial. It requires a lot of work to keep it up to date. A lot of teams providing a lot of content, and then there's the formatting, et cetera. So it needs to be repeated every 90 days. That makes it a great candidate for automation. So we'll be looking for ways to automate the process so that we can pull this uh, roadmap directly from the data that we already have in Zen Hub or GitHub, just to make it uh, much more efficient. And that's the roadmap for the roadmap. And Rose, I think that's mm -hmm. all I wanted to share today. So uh, unless there are any questions, I think I'll turn it back to you. All righty. Thanks, Mike. You can hear me, right? Yes. All right. Let's wrap this up in uh, 10 minutes or less uh, with the new to you, news to you, upcoming and ongoing events. So as Mike mentioned, We've got five planned Zoe.org improvements that we hope to launch prior to the next time we meet, so over the next quarter. 
um, and they include uh, more visible tabs. If you if you watch the moving arrows, we'll try to walk you through those. More visible tabs at the Zoe.org. Uh, collab collapsible announcements banner. Right now, we're taking up a lot of space on that landing page, and we understand that once you come there and you see the announcement, you don't really need to see it necessarily repeatedly, so we want to give you the ability to collapse that announcement if you so desire. Um, we're going to refresh the intro video. That's the video that's just above the little arrow that just lit up there. Um, and we're going to try to make that question of the month pop up a little less intrusive. We need to draw your attention to it for obvious reasons, but um, we also want to uh, make it a little more um, palatable uh, to, to users as they come in and, and see it for the first time. Uh, we're also going to add an upcoming events indicator. That's the 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 arrow there down in the lower right. That little green check mark is going to sort of serve as a hey, this have, hasn't happened yet. You may want to make a note of this on your calendar. And then, uh, as Mike indicated, we're going to add a link to the current roadmap. Right now, as he mentioned, it is in the announcements banner. So if you go to Zoe.org right now and look at that announcement banner, you'll have the ability to to click learn more and download the current version of the roadmap that Mike just shared with you. Okay, next, uh, over the past quarter, Zoe Zach, the advisory council, uh, we began researching the possibility of adding an event management feature to the Zoe ecosystem. Uh, the specific need is associated with the Zoe chat incubator, but we realized we have many more use cases both within Zoe and beyond Zoe that may benefit from this capability. Uh, and this would uh, actually complete Zoe's ability to provide, you know, what we're calling two way communication between ZOS and off host tooling. Uh, we are in the early stages of this um, project, if you will. Um, we are looking for interested vendors and customers. So if you have any interest at all or think you may have some, please, please let us know in the chat and we'll be in touch to get you connected with all of the meetings associated with that um, capability and the possibility of bringing it into Zoe. Uh, so this shouldn't be so new to you if you visit Zoe.org. Um, you should have noticed this, the small pop-up pop box we referred to a couple times here, where you can offer your response to our question of the month. We did launch this this past September, and we're going to plan to continue this for about 12 months. We're just going to evaluate whether or not it's providing, you know, both all of you and all of us the value that we were hoping to to provide. We're just looking for an easy way to get feedback on items that are important to the Zoe community so that you know the various squads and teams have an opportunity to um, reach out to you. Uh, just so that you know, this month, what we're looking for feedback on is the possibility of introducing Zoe training and certification. We're actually working on that in the onboarding squad. And um, you know, if you've got some um, input that you'd like to provide for us and you're willing to uh, experiment and help us out there, please go to the question of the month. There's just a couple questions there that would give you the ability to uh, participate in that. And then also those of you on uh, Zoe Active or maintenance releases, just want to give you a quick look at the release timelines for each of them. Uh, we recently introduced Zoe 2.4. Actually, it was just this week. And for um, that was for V2 and for V1, the latest maintenance release 128.2 was published at the end of November. Um, also, we've introduced a couple of OMP blogs that highlight some of the recent milestones, including uh, the Zoe community's achievement of becoming a CVE numbering authority. Uh, please go ahead and check out uh, Jakob's blog for the details on what that means, that CVA, um, CVE uh, Publishing Authority. It's an interesting uh, read. Uh, we've got the link there if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, as usual, we'd like to give you some insight on our next planned releases uh, coming up over the next quarter and the associated system demos. The system demos are a means for all of you to learn what was just 
pushed out and published into the latest release. Highly recommend that you attend those system demos if at all possible. We've got one coming up on December 19th. I believe that's next Monday at 9 a.m. Um, please consider joining that if you're interested in, in obtaining the webinar link. Um, as indicated here, go to zoe.org, click on that community tab, page down until you see the calendar and you can either see it right in the calendar that's displayed there or you can just uh, click on the link that will take you right into the full calendar to get the details on that webinar. Also, we're heading into our quarterly planning for calendar year 23. Uh, if you're interested in learning what was delivered over the last quarter and you wanna know what's planned for the upcoming quarter, uh, please consider attending. You don't have to attend all of the planning sessions because we have intro sessions and then all of the squads have breakout sessions. Of course, you're welcome to attend any of them. But if you're just interested in an overview, uh, we do recommend that you attend the 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Uh, version of our uh, portion of RPI planning. Um, that will be um, a nice, simple way for you to get a good idea of where the squads are headed. Um, the Zoom links will be included in the Zoe calendar as well, so I'll send you to the same place uh, for a different reason, but that information is on that calendar. Um, where to find more information? Um, if you are looking for, um, you know, any of the replays of, for example, this quarterly webinar, OMP does have a YouTube playlist, as I mentioned earlier, um, for the quarterly webinars. And this is just a, a quick screenshot of what we try to keep you informed about as, as far as upcoming uh, and recent, of, recent events and where to get more information on those. Uh, this is right from the zoe.org landing page, so do continue to check that out. Um, Many of the community members appear at and have recorded sessions at various recent events, including SHARE that occurred in August. We had an entire day devoted to ZOE. Uh, those recordings are available to, to SHARE members. And we had an OMP uh, Open Mainframe Summit in towards the end of September. All of these sessions are available for replay. Highly recommend that you go to this link, again, available on the YouTube playlist and check out any of those recordings. And of course, you will see some of us at the upcoming share plan for March of uh, 2023. We have uh, a few Zoe sessions that uh, you know will be there if you're interested in meeting any of us and seeing any of us. Uh, we have we we offer the availability to educate yourself if you will on some of the information that we're producing through zoe um, and and we recommend that you go to uh, the medium.com blog site for some uh, quick reads and and quick education uh, and also you'll you'll get to learn who's associated with what technology and and who to reach out to within the zoe community should you be interested in in any of the uh, projects associated with Zoe. And of course, when you locate that person, you can direct message us on Slack. We're all out at the OMP project Slack channel, openmainframeproject.slack.com. Um, you can reach out to folks directly, or um, you can also participate in any of the channels that are associated with uh, some of the squads. If you're new to Zoe, we highly recommend you reach out to the Zoe onboarding squad. You'll see Mike and I there quite often. Um, if you have a general question, we recommend Zoe user. Uh, of course, we have Zoe chat, and I should have I should have highlighted, and I apologize, guys. We have we have a Slack channel for the Explorer for IntelliJ squad as well. Um, so if you're interested in, in hooking up with uh, the folks on today's call or um, any of the, the members of that squad, uh, we have a, a Slack channel for them. And I think that does it for us. I just uh, want to remind everybody that, um, you know, we do this every quarter. We have one tentatively planned for next quarter. Um, on March 15th, may I'll hook up with you to see if we can finalize that date. Um, the tentative topic for next quarter will be the Zoe Config Manager. 
and um, yeah, we'll we'll try to make that happen right after share. Share is scheduled for the fifth through the eighth. Uh, we hope to see you all there. Uh, before I close out, are there any questions, uh, Mike? Any are anything show up in the chat that uh, I don't see anything? So no, okay. Well, I, was I, on think... mute. I don't see anything either. Sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. No issues. Uh, no worries. Um, thank you all for spending time with us. We hope you found it valuable. We hope to see you again next time. We wish you um, happy holidays, a great um, perhaps time off and uh, refreshing. And uh, we hope to see you in March in 2023. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining. Special thanks yeah. to our presenters Thank on camera. <laughs>